Welcome on in here to the Wednesday edition of Wager Talk Extra. I'm your host, Dan Alexander, alongside all my great guests. In today's case, it'll be Andy Lang and Kevin Dolan reminding you that no matter what sport you're cashing in on, that money all is going to spend the same. As I mentioned, Andy Lang, he's going to be here talking a little UFC. Did we get closer to dressing up like absolute idiots on the air for you? You'll find out. We'll recap There Will Be Blood last week. He's got a fight to watch. And if you haven't been betting his fast five, I don't know what the heck you're doing. Five and oh, two weeks ago, he goes four and one last week in the fast five. So he's going to have another five fights locked and loaded for you today. Kevin Dolan going to preview Pro Gray versus Zorilla in boxing. And he's also got a soccer play for you going this Friday. So we are locked and loaded here on a Wednesday edition. Let's start a little combat action and start with my man, Andy Lang. And Andy, I always look forward to the message I inevitably get on Saturday evenings where you say, we cashed another There Will Be Blood fight. So uh, I'm feeling good, man. You're, you've been on a nice run with those as well. And you have another one locked and loaded for our only edition here on Wager Talk Extra. Maybe we need to get some more sound drops because this is the lone sound drop that we have for you. It's There Will Be Blood. I want your blood. I want your soul. I want and them both we right want them both. Right now, Andy. <laughs> so what are we thinking here? And uh, and there will be blood. Yeah, we cashed again. So, Dan, that means we're moved to eight and three. That's a milestone because we are now over the halfway point. We need to get to 15 caches on there will be blood. Uh, we have blood from an ear and from a mouth uh, in, in last week's fight. Oh, wow. So pretty easy cash. I got to be honest. This is not a great card for there will be blood. I don't see a whole lot of big time, you know, huge brawls. Uh, but I'm gonna t- I'm gonna roll the dice here with Christian uh, Quinones and Kyung Ho Kang. Um, these guys, uh, these guys, I, I I think this is gonna be a tough fight that goes pretty far in. Uh, Quinones he has a lot of finishes. He certainly has power and knockout power. But Kang is gonna be uh, his toughest opponent in terms of just durability. And Kang also has a wicked jab. And I think he's gonna use that to keep Quinones at distance. So I think what we're going to end up with is a really, really uh, a tough contested fight. That's going to make it in round three. And I really think that Kang is going to really piece up Quinones's face. Uh, He really did a great uh, job against uh, Baccarel in his last fight. I mean, Baccarel had these big, big welts and puffy eyes from just taking that nonstop jab and shots. And so Quinones is going to push forward. Um, he, he, they're going to be the same size. They're, they're really equal across a lot of the ways. Quinones maybe can work the wrestling, but if they do, I think we're going to see a lot of elbows in close if it gets on the ground. But on the feet, I see two guys that are going to struggle to knock each other out, but I think they're going to piece each other up and do some damage. I think it could be a pretty underrated, exciting fight. Uh, but I do think that this is the fight that we eventually see blood in. He had to dive deep to find it, but he found you some potential blood on the card and also a fight that might just not be going the distance. So maybe a little sprinkle on that as well. All right, it's fight to watch time, Andy, before we get to your fast five, which uh, I I know I'll be betting. Uh, But as far as fight to watch, uh, what are you eyeing this weekend and what's the reason you're so excited for it? Well, we got to... Uh, not only a live dog, I think we've got uh, a, a very, very live dog in this one. So uh, we're going to focus on Teresa Bleda versus Gabriela Fernandez. And I have followed Teresa Bleda since she was on the Contender Series. So I know a lot about her. And here's what I know. Uh, she's a grappler and a wrestler and loves to take her opponent down. And that is her strong suit. And she's very good at it. Unfortunately, she's very weak in other parts of her game, mainly cardio. She gasses in the second round. And when I say gas, it, it's over. Uh, she just doesn't have anything left. So she got knocked out in her last fight against Natalia Silva, and there's definitely no shame in that. Silva is an animal, but I, I, I wasn't impressed with her takedowns uh, and, and her offense because at one point Silva was able to reverse her on the ground, and that's a big problem because Blada is five foot nine. She's always going to be taller than her opponents. And her opponent, Natalia Silva, is only 5'4". So Silva showed that she was strong enough to flip over Blada. Uh, Blada gassed in the second round like she does. And then, you know, she she eventually gets knocked out. 
Um, and Gabriel Fernandez, so initially when this fight was first made, you would say, well, Fernandez lost her UFC debut to Jasmine Jazadavicius, who took Gabriel Fernandez down four times, kept her on the ground, and won the fight. So you're going, okay, Teresa Blade takes females down. Gabriela Fernandez gets taken down. But Jasmine Jazadavicius just dominated Miranda Maverick on Saturday. So this loss that Gabriel Fernandez took does not look as bad as initially thought. Where Gabriel Fernandez has a huge advantage of striking. She's an elite striker. Heavy, heavy uh, head kicks, body kicks, leg kicks. Her striking is very crisp. It is light years ahead of Teresa Bleda. So what I'm looking for in this fight is in the first round, if Gabriela Fernandez can land some strikes and do damage to Bleda and just somehow stay on her feet in the first round, I think she runs away with this fight and potentially gets the finish. If Bleda is on point and can get Fernandez down on the ground, Blade is going to eat up the clock and probably, uh, you know, win the first couple rounds, and then we'll see where the cardio goes. But right now, Fernandez is plus 200, maybe even a little bit more than that. And it, all she has to work on in this camp, Dan, is takedown defense. We already know her striking's great. She has one job to do, and that is work on her takedown defense. The other red flag I have with Blade is she's only 21 years old. I think they moved her up a little bit too quick. Um, you can mm -hmm. tell she just doesn't quite have the fill in her body that uh, that, that some of the other women in this division are going to have. And Fernandez is just going to be stronger. So Blade is going to have to use a lot of energy and great technique to get Fernandez down. But if she does not get Fernandez down, look out because Fernandez is live for a knockout with that uh, crisp, uh, crisp um, uh, striking that she has. So I've had a great read on Blada. We cashed on her fight in contender series and we cashed on her first fight in the UFC. So I feel like I have a good read and I feel like this is a great underdog spot. I love it. Maybe a little too much, a little too soon. Great breakdown there from my man, Andy Lang. And before we give these people this absolute gold that you've been dropping in the Fast Five, we first got to send them on over to your page. Don't leave the show just yet, but uh, definitely check out Andy Lang, wt.buzz slash AL. You got a great promo code for him. And you can also load it as we head to again. Well, it's a huge week, and what we're doing is we're putting UFC, PFL, and Bellator all in one pack. So we have – it's just called the MMA Gold Pack, and you'll get plays from UFC, from PFL, from Bellator. We have uh, several of them that are already posted. So I encourage everyone to go grab that. We're hitting 63% this year. Um, so we're having, we're having a really good MMA year. Uh, we're having a great last 365 days. So um, uh, we went two and one last week in UFC. Unfortunately, we lost the bigger of the, of the three plays, but uh, it's a really nice bounce back week. So uh, tough to complain about two and one, but uh, this week, a lot, a lot of profits available for Bellator, PFL and UFC. And that's all in one pack. I love it. Nice and easy, nice and easy to find. And you can use that promo code as well and save some big bucks from my man, Andy Lang. All right, Andy, uh, I'm not only going to be timing you, I'm also going to be feverishly writing down your plays here. A nine and one run here in the fast five. Let's see if we can stay hot and I'll turn the mic over to you, brother. All right, here we go. We're going to do a UFC PFL Fast Five combo. First fight, Zach Pauga and Modestus Bukaskis over two and a half mm -hmm. rounds. Bukaskis is really good on the feet. He moves around in his UFC fight against Tyson Pedro. He tired Pedro out, pieced him at distance. Pauga, not very exciting fighter, likes to push up against the fence, work the clinch. I think this goes to the judges' scorecard, and I like Bukaskis in it. Denez Bondar versus Carlos Hernandez under two and a half Dennis Bondar is coming from this brutal league uh, where they allow a bunch of crazy rules. His last nine fights have gone have not gone the distance. Carlos Hernandez is not very good. Bondar is going to come forward, push the pressure. You're going to see a lot of strikes. I definitely think this does not go the distance. So I'll take under two and a half rounds. I'll take Pat Sabatini money, money line against Lucas Almeida. I like Almeida's skill set. He's got an incredible MMA record, 14-1. and one. I just don't think he can stop the takedowns of Sabatini. And once Sabatini gets a hold of him, gets him on the ground, it's probably going to stay there for the rest of the round. I love Sabatini to roll in this one. We move to the PFL. Biagio Ali Walsh versus Travell Miller. Taken under one and a half rounds. It's minus 200 for under one and a half rounds. That's why this isn't parlay. Biagio Ali Walsh is an incredible fighter. He's Muhammad Ali's grandson. He's a legit fighter. He's going to go far. This is his technical 
professional first fight. It's Travell Miller's first fight. Miller is not very good. Walsh is going to piece him apart and do what he did his last three opponents, which is knock them out. Give me the under on that one. And then I have to play Jordan Newman inside the distance against Matthew Perry. Dan, Matthew Perry has one fight since 2013. Let's just say this guy's probably going to be a little bit rusty. Give me Jordan Newman, who is 5-0 and undefeated inside the distance in a complete walk-off knockout of Matthew Perry. We're taking Jordan Newman over Chandler Bing from Friends is is, is what you're telling me. I, 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 I was completely – once you said Matthew Perry, I was like, man, he had quite the career change there, did, uh, did, did Matthew Perry. Chandler I, Bing I like is – Chandler Bing probably has as many fights as this Matthew Perry does. He has one fight since 2013. What, what are we Brutal. doing here, guys? <laughs> Brutal. Watch out, Monica. Yeah. Watch out for sure. I also love that you sprinkled in a little PFL here in the Fast Five. So we have three fights from UFC. We have two from PFL. And as I mentioned, Andy on a nine and one run on these plays. All right, Andy, always a pleasure, man. We'll be talking with you tomorrow, getting folks ready for some auto racing. But as Andy said, check him out over at his page, wt.buzz slash al. And uh, if, you, if you like getting money across extra sports and the, uh, the I guess, lesser known sports for the bankrolls Andy Lang is the man there and if you can make money on it he's going to find a way to just ask his clients we're going to step aside we're going to take a quick break and when Kevin Dolan comes back don't worry you combat fans we still have some more boxing and I guess the most least contact you can have outside of tennis we do have a soccer play coming your way right after this year on wager talk extra Welcome on back here to Wager Talk Extra. There's no better way to end the Wednesday edition than talking with our favorite guy, the Irishman who's hanging out in Korea. Or uh, you never know where he's going to be. Look, he's like Carmen San Diego. You never know where he's going to be, what's going to be behind my man, KD. Kevin, great to see you, brother. I say we get right into it because you got two great plays for the folks. You already told them we got a soccer play, we got a boxing play. So let's start Friday with the Euro qualifiers. And you got a breakdown here for Denmark taking on Northern Ireland. Uh, you being a homer again, and we just taking uh, Ireland? Or uh, are you from Southern Ireland and you're saying forget those guys? No, I'm actually from Northern Ireland, although it, it gets kind of complicated. They're not my team, but, you know, we'll get into that another another uh, point. But no, not going to be a homer in this one, Dan. Um, I do like Denmark. You know, Euro qualification starts back this week, obviously. The sport that never sleeps soccer. We've talked about that before. Uh, and this should be a good one on Friday. You know, Northern Ireland travel over, traveling over to Copenhagen uh, to take on Denmark, where traditionally they've been strong. Um, both teams need points here. Uh, you know, Slovenia are topping the group on six points. So, you know, both teams will target this game as potential points on the board. So, yeah, looking forward to this one over in the Danish capital on Friday. Well, is it as easy as you just lay, lay the uh, 338 on the money line? Or are you going to get a little bit more creative, try and uh, find a way to bring that price down a little bit? Like, we think Denmark can maybe win by margin, or how are you going to bet it? Yeah, look, I like Denmark, but not not minus three thirty eight. <laughs> like them, it's a bit much for me. Like, and uh, yeah, I like them uh, on the handicap line here uh, to cover at home against Northern Ireland on Friday. You know, minus one point five. That's where the line is right now. I believe Denmark can, you know, clear that here. Um, they come into this qualification campaign, Denmark, they were the pretty heavy group favourites. You know, to finish top initially, it is probably the easiest group in all of qualifying as well. You know, Casper Holmund uh, re-signed until 2026 as manager. Um, you know, understandable that move as well by the Danish board, given how Denmark have been a major force across recent international tournaments. But, you know, Denmark were pulled down a peg or two in the last game against Kazakhstan. They suffered, you know, a really surprising 3-2 loss on the road against Kazakhstan as minus 500 favourites going into that game as well. They looked fairly comfortable. They were cruising late. They are up 2-0 before just a complete meltdown, basically. You know, the Kazakhs got a late penalty, um, which then spurred them on to that incredible comeback. So that'll obviously still be fresh in the minds of Denmark here. But, you know, the good news for them is, we mentioned at the start as well, they have been far stronger at home in Copenhagen across recent qualification runs as well. You know, the Danes haven't actually lost in Copenhagen in a European qualification run since Portugal managed to do it all the way back in 2007 and they face Northern Ireland team in this one that have a Masters two wins across the last nine games and all both of those 
coming against teams well outside the top 100 in Kosovo and San Marino as well. So I'm expecting a bounce back from Denmark in this one. We know how strong they've been in the Danish capital as well, you know, especially coming off that shock loss to Kazakhstan last time out as well. I'm expecting Holmund to rally the troops here, get a big win and cover at home on Friday against Northern Ireland. Lay the goal and a half, says my man Kevin Dolan. They're only minus 110 and uh, fading the Northern Ireland side. I guess you've been away from Ireland a little too long, Kev. The uh, the homerism doesn't run deep <laughs> enough. All right, let's swing it on over from uh, Denmark. I guess we'll head to New Orleans on zone this weekend. Saturday, we got Progray taking on Zaria. And how are you going to be betting this one, Kev? Yeah, former WBA light welterweight champion Regis Prograin not only making his DAZN debut this weekend, but also his first return to his home state of Louisiana in over four years as well. Uh, taking on tough Puerto Rican contender Danilito Zarilla um, in New Orleans. Um, not much value in the outright markets, obviously. You'd expect that mm. uh, Progre going off anywhere between the minus 1,400 to minus 1,600 at most books right now. But there is a nice little plus money rounds pop I quite like in this one this weekend. Um, that I believe presents decent value. So what is the spot that we think has a little value? I know you love those rounds props where you really hone in. You say, well, you know, the way that this fight's going to work out, maybe we can get a knockout mid-round, a stoppage mid-round. Is that how you're going to be betting this one? Or are we looking at like inside the distance? How are you betting it? Well, for anyone who's watched uh, the Tank Davis breakdown videos, they'll know exactly mm. where I'm going with this one because we keep oh, God. pounding that. The rounds five to eight prop and Tank Davis fights have been a straight ATM uh, over the last few fights. And I'm expecting more of the same in this one on Saturday as well. You know, Regis Progray, you know, doesn't have quite that same one-punch knockout power as like a Deontay Wilder or Tank Davis does, you know, kind of turn off your lights with one punch. It's more, you know, Anthony Joshua, Errol Spence, concussive type power that Progrip possesses, kind of breaks you down, deconstructs you. Um, you know, and we go back to the Jose Zepeda fight last time out. Um, he, he did that, stopped him in the 11th round. Just a brutal fight. Tyrone McKenna before that broke him down. Um, both of those guys taking an absolute beating in there. And Ivan Redcatch as well. He was looking for a way out as well in their fight. You know, embarrassing stoppage. So uh, Regis Progrid really does hit with authority and fights. Very, very tough puncher. He's sometimes not the best at cutting off the ring, which, you know, can create escape routes for opponents in there, you know. But make no mistake, if Progrid catches up with you, you're going to know about it. So this isn't the fight originally intended for Progrid. He was meant to fight Australian Liam Paro, who, who comes off an excellent one-punch knockout victory himself last time out. But unfortunately, Paro got injured ahead of this one. Um, so Zarilla stepping in, but while Zarilla is a solid fighter, he likes to press the action a bit too much for my liking. You know, he's got 13 stoppages and 17 wins. He has a good understanding of range, in fairness. He's a solid distance fighter. Uh, he was doing well in, in frustrating Arlen Barboza um, in stretches of their fight last year. But Barboza, he just doesn't hit anywhere near as hard as Prograde does. And I, I just see Zarilla getting systematically broken down. I'm probably getting stopped in the middle late rounds here on, on Saturday. So for me, I'm going to take my old Tank Davis regular bet, the old faithful rounds five to eight, plus 200 right now over at FanDuel. Um, there simply isn't a harder puncher in the 140 pound division for me than Regis Progray. And I do believe he will close the show somewhere in the middle rounds here on Saturday. So play with fire and you're going to get burned. Kevin says the burning happens between rounds five and eight for Zarilla. So there's the breakdown there from Kevin Dolan, the go-to boxing guy over at wagertalk.com. Check out his page. And Kevin, when people are there grabbing those boxing plays, that's not all you have locked and loaded. Tell the folks about the, uh, the full offering that you have over there. Yeah, well, jam-packed week of action, uh, especially in soccer. You know, we've got Nations League midweek mm -hmm. action going on right now. European qualifiers, uh, as we mentioned previously as well. MLS is going on. It's all kicking off right now. And full weekend of boxing action on deck as well. If you haven't already uh, checked it out, we've got a free article over on Widget Talk News right now as well for this weekend's other big fight between Tim Zhu and Carlos Acampo down in Australia. So check that out. And, yeah, as always, excited for another big week, big week ahead. Absolutely. He's our man, Kevin Dolan, and check him out there, wt.buzz slash KD. As he said, soccer never sleeps, but Kevin Dolan has to sleep. So get the hell out of here, brother. And that does it 
for another edition here of Wager Talk Extra. Big thanks to Andy Lang getting you ready in UFC. And big thanks to Kevin Dolan there with some soccer action and some boxing action as well. Kyle Anthony will join us tomorrow, give us his thoughts on UFC, and Andy Lang will get you ready for auto racing this weekend. You know what you get here on Wager Talk Extra. Us reminding you that no matter what sport you're cashing in on, that money all spends the same. Make sure you check us all out over at wagertalk.com. Check out the deals page as well, and we'll see you back here on Thursday for another edition of Wager Talk Extra.